Good afternoon, everyone. Today is a historical day. It, you know, as a former social study teacher that I was for 13 years before being elected to office, we know how important it is to teach the current generation about things that happened in the past. And today we can say that the City Council of New York is making history, is writing another chapter, giving history and dignity to more than one million body being buried in the largest public cemetery in the United States of America. As someone of faith, what I know is that my father being buried in the island of the Dominican Republic when I go to DR, I try my best to give to where my father is buried because it is important to spend time with the loved one. Unfortunately, more than one million individuals didn't have that opportunity. Up to 2014, it all, it took a lawsuit and Melinda is, you know, I can say she is the leader of the advocate. Elizabeth Crowley led this legislation that it took then not only to bring this effort to the floor, but even to take this in a lawsuit. And that's how the city of New York made a decision that the family who has a loved one buried in that place they could make reservation to go and spend time with the loved one. And even today, it takes like a two, three months for someone to be able to contact the Department of Correctional. I have my accent, but you heard clear. The Department of Correctional being in charge of taking the family to be close to where the loved one have been buried. And when you go there, you have to leave your cell phone. You have to leave any item that you have as you're visiting a detention center. And if you are a member of the public, you only have access to be taken in a boat across the island and to be like in a little temple 200 feet after you walk to the largest public cemetery. So those members of the public, they're not allowed to walk free in those days that they allow that the city say that we have opened the public cemetery. So for me, you know, as someone, a community activist, a social justice fighter. I never thought that uh, we had this opportunity to be part of something so big that is beyond myself or this generation. There's hundreds of years of history in that place, in the place that not many people know about it. You know, in the place that used to have missile in that area in the place where the, the civil war, white people refuse to be buried together with black during the civil war. And they were buried in that location. That's a cemetery where the HIV, people thought that, you know, all those bios that we had as a society against the men and women that weren't dealing with the health condition, and they were buried in that location. Immigrants, poor, they're the one who've been buried in that location. So what we are doing today is, I can say it's bigger than what we thought. And I gotta say thank you to Council Member Levine because he's also been a champion with this. Council Member Johnson, you know, my, the coach of the Black and Latino and Asian Caucus, that Nick Miller and all of us who are members of that caucus, we have made this a priority of legislation. And again, like, this is a day 
This is the day we're going to be voting on bills, two bills. The one that I had the privilege to uh, introduce, that is I'm calling DOT to put together a transportation plan. If you go to Governor's Island, you only have to look at how often does the boat leave to Governor's Island. But there's a number of hours that people are able to go there. That doesn't happen in Hard Island. So we would like again to uh, bring everyone to the attention that the mass burial began in the 1870s. We, its original intention to be that of a burial ground for mostly black, Latino, immigrants, and poor who could not afford the expensive cost of being buried in another great vicinity. And that's the case today. A, a, HRA provide $1,200 of assistance to a working class New Yorker that they don't have the money to take the loved one to a funeral. Which funeral has a cost of $200? When most of them are $3,000, $4,000. So even though we provide those $200 assistance, those families, most of them, they had to choose to see the loved one being buried in the public cemetery and not through the process that the rest of New Yorkers are able to go by when they lost their loved one. This is about giving respect and dignity to the people who are buried on the island and the family members who must go through a lengthy and a time complicated process to be able to visit the loved ones who are buried there. Over 60% or the people buried at Hat Island are there because a family member requested. I think the majority of the time, this is, a, this is because they cannot afford to be buried at another cemetery. This piece of legislation was first introduced by former council member Elizabeth Crowley. I would like to acknowledge you know, her work in this matter. I would also like to acknowledge the support of my colleague, as I say, Speaker Johnson, Mike Levine, Deborah Ross, uh, Donovan Richard, among many others. We would not have been able to arrive to this point without the support from all of these stakeholders. Today, the committee will be voting on proposed intro number 909-B, which I am the prime sponsor, sponsor together with my colleague. This bill will require the Department of Park and Recreation or another agency or office designated by the mayor to consult with the Departments of Transportation to develop a plan to provide or ensure the availability of public, public travel, including ferry services, to and from Hart Island. They don't have to live only from City Island. They used to live from close to the Bellevue Hospital. That was another location where the ferry used to live in the past. So they just had to reinstate that ferry. They can identify all the location in Queens, in Manhattan. So this is not just adding traffic to City Island. This is about addressing how we can give the dignity and respect to one million, uh, work, one million individual buried in that location. We must provide the proper mode of transportation for the family members and loved ones to be able to visit their disease. Along with this legislation, at 2 p.m. today, the Committee on Parks and Recreation, chaired by Council Member Ku, will be voting on Intro 906, which I am the prime sponsor to. That bill has been strongly supported by Speaker Johnson and many advocates. Intro 906, we finally changed the control of the largest public cemetery in the nation from the departments of corrections to the departments of park, Hart Island, which has over one million bodies, must, be got, must not be guarded by correctional officers. That's a place that what individuals should get is only love by the loved one. There should not be any restriction for anyone, visitors, New Yorkers, family one, to spend time 
in that location. We need to make Heart Island a place of peace where people can go and pay their respect to their loved ones. The time has come today to open the cemetery for the loved ones and the family members. We must turn Heart Island into a proper final place of rest. I would like to once again thank the leadership of Speaker Johnson who cared deeply and we did a tour together to that location and he committed to work together with us to address the future of Heart Island and has made this a issue of priority. I recommend a yes vote on proposed intro number 909-B. And before I ask the, the committee clerk to please call the roll, I also would like to uh, uh, give the opportunity to my colleague, uh, Council Member Jonah, also to say a few words since he also represents that area. Pero antes de eso, lo que estamos hoy es dando justicia a un millón de personas que han sido enterradas en el cementerio más grande de los Estados Unidos de Norteamérica. La mayoría de ellos, inmigrantes como yo, que vinieron como yo con un green card, que vinieron indocumentados, personas homeless que vinieron de otro estado, que por cientos de años se le negó dársele el respeto que ellos se merecían. Hoy estamos haciendo justicia, hoy estamos haciendo historia, Hoy estamos pasando el control del cementerio público más grande de la nación de ser transferido de lo correccional al departamento de parque. With that, I would like to give the opportunity to my colleague, Council Member Jonah, to say a few words. Thank you so much, Chair. I'm Councilman Mark Jonah, and I represent Heart Island. And I'm grateful to you, Chairman, for allowing me to speak before you call for a full vote. Potter's Field, which is known as Hearts Island, means a great much to the families that have the estimated one million people buried there. We should be judged as a society on how we treat those that are buried and the deceased. And it must always be done in dignity and with the respect that everyone deserves. One of the considerations that was not afforded was to the, my constituents, those that live on City Island, like most New Yorkers. They experience daily struggles in a plague with high traffic congestion and limited parking. Hundreds of them have strongly expressed that they do not support the addition of ferry service to Heart Island from City Island. The infrastructure does not exist to support additional ferry service. Simply put, the ferry service would create a public safety hazard to City Island. Intro 909 does not take my constituents or their quality of life into account. A study has been conducted to determine the effects of this ferry service. As such, there is too much uncertainty regarding future transportation, in addition to all of the unattended consequences that may come with these changes. I firmly stand behind the majority of my constituency. Therefore, I am happy to put it on record that I do not agree with this bill in its current form because it puts and allows for the mayor without a task force to make the final determination of a transportation plan. There is no committee that is going to be set up that takes into consideration those that will be impacted before a plan is implemented. It's solely in the hands of the mayor to consult with DOT, Parks, or any other agency to develop the transportation plan for public travel without the input of those that would be impacted. Thank you, Chairman, and I thank my colleagues for allowing me to speak before they cast a vote, and I ask them to take what I just said into consideration. If it was their district that was going to be impacted, 
I would imagine you too would be fighting for a task force or a committee where that, those stakeholders would be included in the negotiations and final determination of a transportation plan. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Chair. And as, as you heard, the bill is calling for the, the, the city to put together the group. They will be making recommendations on how to make transportation from different locations to Hart Island. So with that also, we address that we are not yet adding traffic to City Island as part of this plan. This is about also calling for the city to address all the location. We understand, you know, the concern of my colleague there, and we also know that as we will be, again, working in this body, it, 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 together with our colleague, we need to be sure that when we get close to the moment, when we expect for them to put together a plan, that it, motor transportation that includes, should include ferry, but should not be only just ferry. Also, we feel that it should come from different locations to Hart Island. And with that, I recommend a yes vote, and I would like to ask the committee clerk to please call the robocall. Robo robo but before that, I would like to acknowledge that we've been joined by Council Member Cabrera, Richard Cook, Benchaka, Diaz, Dodge, Jonah, Levine, Miller, and Reynoso. William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote, Committee on Transportation, Introduction 909B, Chair Rodriguez. Aye. Levine. Uh, Mr. Chair, permission to briefly ex uh, explain my vote? Of course. Okay, thank you. You know, it's really a mark of shame that for generations in this city, New Yorkers who in life have faced poverty and disease and homelessness people who have been marginalized in life have, again, been marginalized in death, buried by our city in mass graves, unmarked mass graves on an island uh, that is a secure facility far and inaccessible from the people whose loved ones are buried there. Um, we are embarking today on what will be the end of that shameful era, and it is Thanks to uh, the efforts of one woman in particular, Melinda Hunt, who uh, began as a voice in the wilderness to speak out on behalf of the one million New Yorkers who are buried there and the countless family members who have loved ones on heart. And we really owe her a debt of gratitude. She's doubling today as, camera, as a camera person, but uh, she's r really an extraordinary activist. Um, this is the first of three, actually the second of three hearings that are putting together a really powerful package to transform um, Hart Island. Yesterday, we passed bills out of the Health Committee that would um, ensure people have information on the burial options um, when a loved one dies and ensures that there is public input on the new plan for burial there. And later following this very important uh, hearing, we'll be considering a bill, uh, a really a monumental bill that would transfer jurisdiction of Hart Island from the Department of Corrections to the Parks Department where it belongs, opening up the possibility that Hart will become a dignified, environmentally conscious, well-maintained, open and welcoming, publicly accessible cemetery. What it should be. This is only the beginning of that process there is going to be years, years of advocacy ahead on behalf of all of us in the council and advocates like Melinda and others, um, in which really careful consideration will also have, have to be offered to the people who live nearby on City Island, uh, something I'm certainly committed to ensure happens. I know the chair feels the same way. Um, today is a start, but this is a really important moment in history for New York City that is going to begin a new era of respect and dignity for the poorest amongst us, the marginalized, um, who in death deserve at least the dignity of burial in uh, the kind of cemetery where any of us would want our loved ones to spend eternity. Uh, so I'm, I'm grateful to this committee, uh, to you, Chair Rodriguez, to Speaker Johnson, uh, and to all my colleagues uh, for making this new era possible. Thank you, and I'll be voting aye. Cabrera. 
permission to explain my vote, make it uh, very brief, but, uh, you know, one of the deepest, most profound human experiences uh, that I think anybody could go through uh, is grieving and mourning. And I, I want to commend uh, Melinda and, and all the advocates and my colleagues in making uh, this bill possible because we have to remove every hardship in a human experience is already hard enough, which is mourning and grieving. Uh, and with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I vote aye. I'm proud to vote aye. Thank you so much. Deutsch. Permission to explain my vote? Thank you. So um, I, I just uh, have some concerns with the uh, jurisdiction, uh, switching jurisdictions from uh, the Department of Corrections to uh, Parks, Parks Department. And I understand the Parks Department will um, have protocols on, on the visit, uh, visitors oversight in Hot Island as well as keeping records of the, um, the one million plus people that are buried at a Hot Island. But I just want to mention that for the record that in the future, if anything, is done in Hot Island by Parks Department that we now don't know like what the future of Hot, Hot Island is. Um, according, like the chair has mentioned, that we need to respect those that are buried there. And I just hope in the future that the graves will not be disturbed in any way, especially according to Jewish and Muslim tradition. Um, you know, I hope that if anything should be done in the future, um, they should reach out to organizations such as the Hebrew Free, Free Burial, to who they accommodate um, the deceased and especially um, help those who are less fortunate and, uh, and relocate in, in a proper way according to tradition. So I hope that nothing, that if anything is being considered in the future by Parks Department, the public should um, be informed about it and the council should, have, uh, should be able to weigh in. Uh, and, and, uh, and with that, I will vote um, aye. Cool. I will I. Miller. I vote aye. Menchaca. Thank you to all your advocacy, uh, to all the advocates, and I vote aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Just quickly, I uh, just want to congratulate uh, the chair and all of the individuals, Melinda, who, who've worked on this, you know, to think about these individuals who've been marginalized while they were alive, to be marginalized even in death is shameful. And it's, it's going to forever be a stain on this city that majority of black and brown people who we know are buried at Hart Island were not treated in a dignified fashion, nor with the respect and dignity that they deserve in their families. Uh, you know, I was looking at the report and to see that, you know, even their graves, you know, they, they're put in pine boxes and marked by black permanent marker as if their lives didn't matter is unconscionable. And um, I'm happy that we're, we're doing something today to change that. Um, so I, I'm going to vote aye, but it's hard not to get emotional looking at this report and to just think about how many of their family members tried to get to that island who could not and how they felt degraded and as if their lives didn't matter as well. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to take this vote today. With that, I say aye. Diaz. Permission to split my vote, Mr. Chairman? Thank you. You know, Powder's Field is, uh, is, uh, brings me memories. In 1965, my nephew, uh, I used to live in two, you know, 590 Salter Avenue in Brooklyn, be between Georgia and Alabama in Brooklyn, in Southern Avenue. So something happened, he died. And, and then he was put in the, they found him in the basement of that building. So with the family, we didn't know. So we went all over looking for him. And for one year, my nephew was buried in Paddyfield. For one year. And 
one of the friends, uh, after a year, they came and they told the family what happened. And and then we found out that he was very in Potter's Field. We, we make all the arrangements to take him out of Potter's Field and took him to Puerto Rico. So we, turned, we took him from, again, from Potter's Field and my family buried him in Puerto Rico. And so, so that brings memory to me. But on the other hand, when we talking about making uh, honorable for the for the for the people buried there, <clears throat> transportation would be good for the family. We are trying to have the family to go and visit and and, and, and have better transportation, but we're not doing any thing good for for, the, for for those buried there until until we make for them to are buried who are buried there making easy nobody knows who they are they get numbers they, they bury in, in one in one grave they have five or four or five people or nobody knows they got by numbers so they are not the so 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 we're talking about we we have to make the made for them uh, record, uh, honorably. I don't know how we're going to be honorably. They, they are like sardines in, 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 uh, with, with no names. So I suggest that we're making it easier for the family to go there, to be see what. They're going to go there, and there's no grave that you could go and say, Okay, here is my nephew, Jesus Pesquera. Here it is. It's numbers. So if we want to make it honorable for them, then we have to make sure that to be sure that they're honorable and and, 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 and and that the family go there. But the family gonna go into a into into grace where there's too many people buried. There's not that regular. I don't know if you know that, right? You know that, right? So I'm, I know what I'm talking about. I, I, I deal with, with Pottersfield. So uh, make it honorable for, to whom? Make it easy for the family to go there to be see what? That's what I'm talking about. I'm voting yes, Mr. Chairman. I'm voting yes. But I'm telling you guys, don't use things to put other things because you don't make it honorable for those that live there. On, on, until they are decently, decently uh, identified like any other cemetery. But the way they got in part of the field, you got to go there and they got to find it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of the, the numbers. Then you go find the numbers and then you go there and in that grave you got how many? How many people you got in that grave? So I'm going to yes. But to you, I congratulate you, but we got a lot of work to do. Thank you. I have a vote of 10 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Item has been adopted by the committee. I would like to say that the names are there. Uh, Council Member Diaz, the names are there. So in the family today, they can go and find their names. Uh, thanks, to, thanks to the a Heart Island Foundation and Melinda. Here we have one of the mothers that went through those, through those difficult situations who lost his loved one during the snowstorm. And when her daughter was born, she was separated and born based on my recollection, the story that we share with some heart condition. She found out weeks after that she had died, but she didn't know where she was. And it was through Melinda that she, she connect and Melinda hope for her to find out where her daughter was buried. A few months ago, I got a call from another person, I think now he's in Chicago in another state, and his friend called me to say, you know, I have a friend of mine that his mother was buried, and, and, but he has not closed that situation or you know, some challenges that they have in the in the relationship. And, and, and I put a family in contact with Melinda too, and, and they were f able to find out 
that yes, the mother of that gentleman who is in another state far from here is buried in that location. So we are still working on the arrangement on when he is ready to come and spend time with the loved one. So I can tell you that I've been walking through different communities, the South Bronx, uh, Washington Heights, and I've been stopped in Queens and Brooklyn. People know that we are working in this effort. And people know that the city of New York has failed in the past. And people know that this is about human rights. And people know that most public cemeteries are on the parks in the, in the United States of America. So this is the only one that we have in the nation that is on the correctional facility. So today, again, uh, this is a great day for all of us. But also I want to highlight it, that one of my ideas is that those buildings, empty buildings, that we had to turn them down, we should rebuild those buildings and we should build the Museum of the Dead in New York City so that we can learn through the history of those individuals. Every single individual buried in that location, every single generation of people, they represent a chapter of social study that were students they should be learning from. So again, today's, right now it's about the transportation plan. Now this hearing will be followed up by the park uh, committee that will be the one again leading the vote on transferring a uh, hard island from correctional to park. But this is a, probably one of those bills among probably more than 50 that I have passed here that I can say is one of the most important for a large number of people as one million individuals being buried here. Many of them, they are not just only people who are New Yorkers. Just think about a homeless person that has a family one in California, that is part, was part of the working class, but also middle class and upper class. And they lost connection with the family. And they decided that they didn't want to be in touch with them. And those people have died in our city. And those people have been buried in that location. So again, with that, I would like to close this hearing and say thank you to everyone.